Now, in contrast, the royal family has released a video of Princess Kate sorting through donations at a charity with George Charlotte and, of course, Prince Louis, uh, whose characteristically cheeky antics were on full display. Here he is. As you're the volunteers for this evening. Right, you ready? What we would like you to do is try and choose some presents for some children who are similar age to you guys. So if you think about what you would like to, to play with. Yeah, All these bags are donations, and then we have to then go and sort them and put them in all the boxes. Esther, fans have loved seeing this very authentic insight into particularly the youngest royals. Um, what note should Harry and Meghan be taking away from this, the way that Kate, and Will and the family uh, handles the media? Well, the thing is, the royal family are experts in, in anything to do with PR and, 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 and managing their reputation. And that's not to say that it's disingenuous. It's just to say that they understand, you know, the privilege that they have being in the position that they have representing the United Kingdom and living the kind of lifestyles that they have. And it's about giving back and it's about not complaining and not making it seem like you're, you're so disadvantaged that all you have to do is complain about your life. They were at, uh, uh, Princess uh, Catherine was at a, a baby bank in uh, Maidenhead um, and she and her children were, were packing presents for, for families with young children. These are the kinds of things that actually make people understand that they're, they're aware of the things that go on around them. They're actually uh, not completely tone deaf. They have a sense of self-awareness. Now, you haven't really seen that with the Sussexes. It's mostly been about their grievances within the royal family, with the media, how uh, effectively their, their reputation hasn't been curated in the, in the exact same way. And and unfortunately, that has really backfired. I mean, I, I was making the point that for someone like Prince Harry to, to, to be able to get away with being a lovable public figure um, because of the, the work that the royal family did in curating his reputation after, you know, wearing a Nazi costume, for instance, and making racial slurs uh, towards certain members of staff. Um, for him to be able to be seen by the British public as, as a human being who's made mistakes, who's a lovable character, who's someone in tune with reality, to now this kind of moaning, really miserable, middle-aged man uh, who doesn't seem to understand that he's a literal prince and couldn't have more privilege if he tried, it just goes to show that actually that you have to have a certain level of self-awareness and that's something that the royal family has really mastered even even in times of crisis even in times of you know when the royal family uh, had a lot of internal conflict like now but the, for instance back in the 1990s uh, with the dissolution of, of the marriage between uh, 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 Diana and King Charles it, you know there was still a sense of actually we realise that we're in a very privileged position and we have to be, we tread carefully in, uh, about how we, we come across. And I don't think the Sussexes ever learned that. I mean, one of the points that I made is the Sussexes never really displayed a sense of duty. It only took a couple of years for them to storm out of the royal family, um, like pe petulant children, you know, release an interview with Oprah where they were just complaining, you know, release a book like Spare where they were just complaining, release a Netflix documentary, again, where they were just complaining. And it just goes to show that actually they didn't have a lot of grit, which, which made demonstrate that their hearts weren't in it or they had uh, different motives um, which don't align with, with with what the royal family is about. And we're seeing that as their star continues to fall, you can actually see the flaws in the, in, in the couple's character and what they actually thought they were going to do as members of the royal family. Now, onto Princess Kate, and despite the barrage of allegations which seem to have been aimed at her this year, including uh, those racism claims made in Endgame, she seems to be just getting more and more popular. Do you think it's because she just gets on with it and keeps her head down? I think so, and I think that there is an element of understanding that most things will blow over. Um, most outrage mobs don't don't have the stamina to keep being outraged for for months or even years at a time. Uh, at the end of the day, it's it's very difficult to be in the public eye and not have moments where you have negative media press or there'll be people that will make unsubstantiated claims against you, especially as a working member of the royal family, where you effectively forfeit your right of reply. You know, you can't complain to the media, you can't uh, effectively make your case because most people don't want to hear it. Um, and that's something that, you know, Princess Catherine understands. This is a woman that 
was involved with Kate uh, with William from a very young age. You know, she was she received a lot of negative media attention. She was called Weighty Katie, and you know the the press followed her every move. We've really seen her evolve from a young woman in university to to now being the future queen. And in all of that, she's never given an inclination that she's not grateful or that she hates what she's doing or um, she she's a victim in any way. She really just gets on with it. And I think that's a mantra that many members of the royal family have 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 adopted. That's been very successful. And it, it, the Sussexes are a prime example of how things can go south once you deviate from that. Once you you make it known that actually you feel like a victim and everyone must must treat you as such, um, you're not going to get very far. And unfortunately, that's the name of the game. You do forfeit certain things when you are in a position of prominence. And unfortunately, your right to complain uh, is, is one of them. Now, rumours are swirling that Princess Beatrice and Eugenie have been keeping a somewhat lower profile uh, because they're may have potentially enhanced roles in the future. The think tank Civitas has warned that the monarchy risks abolishing itself by stealth if it doesn't add to the roster of working royals. Would it make sense for Beatrice and Eugenie to officially start work as working royals? I mean, that's something that's, that's you know, stranger things would have happened, should I say. Um, and we have to remember that this, the, the Megxit, effectively, the exit of the Sussexes from, you know, the royal family wasn't just a loss in terms of, you know, them losing literal working members of the royal family, but you also lost resources and assets. The, the, the royal family engages in many public engagements throughout the year. I mean... You know, Princess Anne is, is, is the, the hardest working royal. Um, she engages in hundreds of engagements every year. There is work that needs to be done uh, to represent this country and, 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 and the Commonwealth. And by having fewer resources to do it, you do stretch other working members of the royal family quite thin, especially when they have families and other you know, sort of personal uh, commitments. So it does make sense that uh, Princess Eugenie and Beatrice will eventually be brought into the fold. I think that that's something that would uh, actually be quite, quite beneficial to the king. We know how uh, you know Prince Andrew has effectively crashed out of the royal family in disgrace, um, and it's his own fault. Um, but the question is, should his daughters be punished for it? At the end of the day, the royal family is a, is a much bigger than than one or two, or in, in this case, three disgraced members um, exiting it in a very unfashionable way. Um, so I can actually see that happening. I mean, they do a lot of charity work and, and um, sort of a lot of public engagements in their own right. Uh, and and it's, it's not something that would be alien to them to actually do things on, on behalf of the king. And I think they'd be primed to do it. And I, I definitely think if that were to be the case, the Sussexes could learn a lot from, from Princess Eugenie and Princess Beatrice.